Hi Gemini, welcome to April. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy and create some sacred space. And say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for new members. Welcome, new subscribers. Um, and thank you for those who've ordered readings. Thank you, I appreciate your support. And for those who've taken time out to comment. So let's see what's happening for Gemini. Um, in the month of April. What does Gemini need to know about love? We have a new moon in Aries on April 5th and a full moon in Libra, which is on the 19th at 29 degrees. So something is going to be completing at the end of the month. Some type of relationship issue. But we'll get into the astrology later. Let's just see now. What does Gemini need to know about love, relationships, anything else important for the month of April? What is coming up for the month of April for Gemini? What does Gemini need to know about love and relationships for the month of April? forces be present to ensure that the truth be told. The Eight of Swords, the Queen of Cups, the Hierophant, the Eight of Cups, the Lovers, the Nine of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, the King of Swords, the High Priestess, and the King of Cups. So, the Eight of Swords, it seems like you have some choices to make in April. Well, they could be, but the Eight of Swords, you start the month out feeling trapped or not, feeling afraid to take action, afraid to move out of a situation. A part of you wants to leave something. Um, so you have this Queen of Cups and you also have the King of Cups. So I feel that you're doing a lot, of, you're trusting your intuition. You're feeling very sensitive in the month of April. Um, and that's going to help you make your decision. Because I don't... Gemini is an air sign, and usually um, air signs use logic to make decisions. But this month, I think you might be feeling more emotional. Um, so you're, you're using your, your gut feeling, your intuition... And I think that's the way out because even the high priestess is here, which is also about following, listening to that inner guide, listening to that voice, that voice of intuition. Because um, we've just come through a lot of very uh, Pisces energy, especially Mercury conjunct Pisces. I mean, conjunct Neptune and Pisces, with Mercury retrograde. Now it's going direct, but there's been a lot of confusion in the previous month. So you've had to kind of fly blind. Like, what do I do? I can't see. You see the Eight of Swords here. It's like, you, I can't see the future, so I'm afraid to take action. I don't have enough information. So I have to make decisions based on how I feel. You know, you have this hunch or this gut feeling. And that's what you're going to be flying by. Your intuition and trust. So take time out to quiet your mind and to listen to that voice. Now the Hierophant is here in the past. So you could have been dealing with someone, well, in a career situation, you could have been dealing with a, a company that has uh, been around for a long time, very strict, very rigid. And a part of you might be thinking about leaving. I feel like there's two things going on. You're thinking about career success because you have this Three of Pentacles here. And you're thinking that maybe you want to move on to something else something more fulfilling. The, the eight, because the Eight of Cups is here. But there's also something going on in your relationship. There's something, it's, it's like something in your life is just, it, it was solid and stable and it was satisfying up to a certain point. 
Um, but maybe you felt like the people around you or the person you were involved with, because the Hierophant could be, could be a Taurus or someone who's very stubborn or very fixed. So either you're dealing with a company that's very rigid and it's not open to change and you find that limiting or you feel, feel like you're imprisoned, like I can't do what I want to do, this Eight of Swords. Um, so I feel trapped. You know, I, I feel like I'm stagnating. I'm suffocating. I, I need to take action, but I don't know. Um, I'm not sure which way to go. Or I'm afraid to move out of my current situation. And even in a relationship, you could be dealing with someone who's very, who could be stubborn. Um, and you feel like they're not open to doing, to change. And Gemini, um, Gemini likes to switch things up for every now and then. Gemini likes excitement. Gemini, like, Gemini likes trying new things, exploring. Um, you get bored with the status quo. You get bored with the same old, same old. You want to do things, you know, in a new way. And you might be dealing with either a company or either your, it's either your job or, or your relationship. That's, you feel like they're holding you back. You're being held back. You're not being allowed to express yourself in the way that, you know, your natural um, curiosity, your natural need for, for change. So you've been thinking about this, moving on. The Eight of Cups here is a card of moving on, leaving something behind to move on to something better, to move on to something more fulfilling, maybe even following a new spiritual path. It's like you're having this dark night of the soul, like I need something more. My life is, you know, I need more something more in my life. Yes, I've had certain successes, and yes, there is love around me, but I'm bored, uh, or I'm feeling like there's something missing, and I need to move on. I need to find what that, that missing thing is. But a part of you is afraid. You have this Eight of Swords, like, I, I don't know if I can move on. I feel trapped. I feel stuck. Um, the, the Lover's card is coming up, and the Nine of Wands in the future. So the Lover's... It could represent a relationship, a very strong attraction. So you could be in a relationship with someone and you're trying to make a decision. Do I stay or do I go? You know, there's a lot that's good here because you have this king of cups and the queen of cups. These are like, it's like a soulmate connection. But you're not looking at each other. So maybe there was like a falling out or you're not seeing eye to eye for now. There's also this king of swords. There could be someone else in your environment that maybe... Um, there's like a third party situation for some people or um, or you're just wondering what you need to do. It seems like you're trying to choose between either two people or two situations. In one of the situations, you've been involved with this person for a long time because the Nine of Wands is here. And the Nine of Wands is about feeling like you've been like struggling, you know, it's like the nine of wands is defending yourself, standing, fighting for what you want, feeling that you're always being put on the defensive or having to stand your ground, being more assertive. This king of swords in your environment, maybe there's someone around you who you feel is being too harsh or too judgmental. Um, maybe you feel like you're being criticized And you're trying to decide, do I want to stay or do I want to go? And I think I'm getting this feeling, it's, it's in both areas. It's not just relationship. It could even be career. It could be that maybe people around you are saying, well, you better think carefully about your decisions because, you know, once you make your choice with the lovers, the lovers is a serious decision. You're ready to make a serious move. And it's going to be a move that you can't undo once you ch once you choose it. So you have to really make sure that this is what you really want. And that's where the King of Swords comes in. And also, King of Swords is about, if you look at this card, he's separating what's real from what's not real. Separating the truth from fiction. Really looking and seeing, you know, what are my choices? What can I do? Yeah, there are, maybe there are certain areas that you can't act 
you know, there's nothing I have, I have no control over everything, but I do have control over some things. And within that framework, I can take action. So, because the lovers is also, when you're making a decision with the lovers, um, once you choose that new path, the other path kind of goes away. So you want to make sure that the path you're choosing is the path that really speaks to who you are. Don't let fear hold you back from choosing the right path. Don't um, stay stuck because of fear. But also know that you have to, you know, you may not be able to go back and undo the choice. The Nine of Wands also says, though, that you're so you're very close to victory. So you might be just feeling battle weary, like maybe you've been working toward a goal and you feel like you've been struggling for a long time and you're ready to give up because you feel like, well, I just don't know if I can continue. Um, I feel like quitting. The nine is saying you're, you're getting really close to a point where your troubles will be, you, you can put the burden down and you're getting close to, and I feel like this is more, well, this could also be career, like if you've been really working hard at, at your job. You have the Three of Pentacles here, which means career recognition and success, but it's in your negative thinking sector. So I feel that you don't feel that you could ever get rewarded for the work that you're doing. Or you don't feel that promotion or recognition is, in, is possible. And so you're thinking about quitting or giving up the, the goal. And I'm saying there are things going on behind the scenes that you may not even be aware of and things are going to straighten out and you may like so don't quit don't give up it just means that you the people that you're dealing with they don't they don't take action in a quick way everything seems to take a long time and especially since we just came out of march was everything was a slowdown now, in April, we have this new moon in Aries. Things are going to start to happen with it, with this new moon in Aries. Because Aries energy is very proactive. It's very, let's get things done. So, um, and Mercury will be going direct. Mercury is your ruling planet. By the time you get into April, um, now, you know, when, you're in, when we're in April, because Mercury goes direct on the 28th of March, and just before this new moon in April, uh, in, yeah, April 5th. And things, you're going to see things start to pick up. So don't, um, the feeling of fe being trapped is only going to be temporary. And you may feel a little bit limited at the beginning of the month because Saturn will be squaring this new moon. So you have all these ideas of what you want to do, but you feel like you're being blocked by authority or you're being blocked by circumstances um, so in a relationship maybe you feel like a partner is being a little bit too critical of you or not being compassionate enough and um, you're really looking for someone that you could that's a little bit kinder and more nurturing so this king of cups is an outcome you have the high priestess and the king of cups King of Cups is, is it could be a friend that you got you can talk to. Someone who really um who's very compassionate, very kind, very loving, very um very calm in a crisis. This could be the person that can help you figure out what, where you want to go. Because there, I feel like there's someone that you really can't talk to. There's someone in your life that you feel like I, I just can't talk to this person. They're just not, they don't understand. They don't have any compassion. They don't, I don't feel, I'm not feeling the love. Um, but I feel like you have a real connection with this King of Cups. And this person is very compassionate, very sensitive, very kind and loving. And I feel like the two of you can, there could be even a, a feeling that, you know, I want to connect with this person. And that could be, for some of you, you might be trying to choose between two people. And you're leaning toward this King of Cups. You're wanting that. But again, you have to make your decision carefully. I mean, the lovers is definitely a strong attraction. 
It's a soulmate connection. Um, but with the lover's card, there's also there's always some kind of issue of choice, choosing between two paths, either two people, two direct. Do I stay? Do I go? Do I choose this person? Do I choose that person? Do I um, stay in my current career? Do I move on to a new job or a new life? I mean, I feel like with the Eight of Swords, your power is restricted in the current energy. You're feeling limited, restricted, and you want to break free. You have the High Priestess here in your wish fulfillment. So I feel like there are things going on behind the scenes that you may not be aware of. So don't make any quick, impulsive decisions in April. Take time out to think and to hear that inner voice, to meditate, and then ask for guidance. You know, you can say um, to your, if to God or Source or whatever spiritual path you're on ask for guidance what you know and you'll get it in your if you can calm your mind enough and get into that meditative state you'll get the guidance you need so let's see what the uh, astrology has to say so you have a new moon in your 11th house in Aries so this could be a new beginning um in terms of friendships, the groups that you belong to, you might be joining a new group of people. You may have a new dream, a new beginning that helps you manifest a dream. Because the 11th house is the house of friendship, dreams, the groups that you belong to. Um, you know, you might have an idea to, to help society in some way and you want to have this new beginning. You want to start this new project. And it's being squared by Saturn in your eighth house. So maybe you don't have the money or the financial support. Uh, you might need funding to take action. Because the eighth house um, is the money that we get from others. Like um, inheritance or if you go for like a bank loan. It's also the house of sexual attraction, intimacy. So it's possible uh, you want to start something new, like a friendship could be turning to love. Or there's someone that you know as a friend that you might be attracted to, but there's a part of you that's afraid. There's a fear involved, especially with the Eight of Swords. There could be fear involved, like I'm afraid to get close to this person. I'm afraid to be intimate. Um, and that's holding you back. Also, Saturn is conjunct the south node in Capricorn. So Capricorn is about work, it's about discipline, it's about you know paying your dues, hardship, limitation. The south node is what we need to work away from. Like you might have been spending a lot of time working really hard and you're neglecting the, the north node which is in Cancer, which is am I nurturing myself? Am I taking care of me? Am I creating a home um, for myself? Am I surrounding myself with people that are nurturing? Maybe you've been focused too much on career and you've been neglecting the other side of life, which is your home base. You know, what is it that nurtures you? What is, who is it that loves you? Are you giving enough time to relationship? Um, because I feel like you have a lot of successes. In terms of career, you've gone through, you're, you're, you've been successful in career and you've been working really hard, but now it's like there's this missing piece. Okay, what about love? What about relationship? And I feel like you have a chance to have a new beginning with this new moon. If you can release the fear that's holding you back from taking action and being and initiating something. Fear that's holding you back from getting, you know, getting closer to someone. The full moon now falls in Libra at 29 degrees. Now last month we had the full moon in Libra at zero degrees. So that was like a new, there was like a new energy coming. With the 29th degree, that's definitely some type of ending. Some cycle is ending. For you, it's falling across your fifth and 11th house. So it could be something that you with children. Um... Maybe some, some of you kids are going off to school, getting married, moving away. There's some relationship that's ending around children. It could be a romance 
that comes to a culmination. It doesn't always have to be an ending. It just means that you make a final decision about it. So if you've been on the fence about something, with this full moon, you can't continue. You have to make a decision. So whether it's to stay or to go, I mean, some of you might decide, okay, I'm going to try and work it out. I'll stay. Some of you may decide, no, this is impossible. I need something else. And then you end the relationship. But it's affecting the 5th and the 11th house, this full moon. So it means that the 5th house is also the house of creative expression. Maybe you're ready to express yourself in a new way. The old way is not working anymore. Whatever used to give you pleasure, whatever used to bring you, whatever you thought of was as fun, is no longer satisfying and you're looking for something new. A new way of expressing yourself, a new relationship, a new romance, a new friend, maybe even making new friends. Maybe the, the groups that you belong to, you don't really feel connected to as much. You're needing fresh air. You're needing something new. At the same time, Uranus is in, is in Taurus. It's moved into Taurus. And it's in your 12th house. And it's kind of really close to this moon. It's close to the sun, actually. It's, it's almost conjunct with the sun, even though they're, they're in different signs. So the sun is at 29 degrees Libra. I mean, the sun is at 29 degrees Aries, which is almost Taurus. And Uranus is at 2 degrees Taurus. So they're almost conjunct. And Uranus is opposing the moon from Taurus. And it's activating your 12th house, which is the house of psychological issues. Whatever is hidden. Uranus wants to free you from your fears. Free you from self-sabotage. Free you from whatever is it's affecting your emotions. Because um, it's connecting with your moon. It's, it's opposing your moon. And it's conjunct your sun. And it will get closer, you know. Well, this, it's not conjunct your sun. It's conjunct the sun of this full moon. <laughs> the sun in, in Libra. And that's all happening. So it's like, there's some kind of relationship. I think it's more of a friendship that's going to be changing unexpectedly. You may have an opportunity for new romance with a friend or new romance through the groups that you belong to. And it could come on suddenly because Uranus is a sudden, out of the blue, like all of a sudden, like, hey, I didn't even realize how I felt. Here's this opportunity, you know, and you have to take action. Also, at the same time, Venus is in Pisces at 28 degrees and it's almost conjunct Mercury in Aries at 2 degrees. And Mercury's conjunct Chiron. So, this is affecting a lot of activity in your 11th house. Venus is traveling through your 10th house, so there could even be romance through work. somewhere, Someone at work you could be attracted to. Or you're getting along better with people that you work with. You're doing something that's really creative. Um, but there could be a romance that comes out of, if you're not attached to anyone, there could be some kind of attraction that comes out of through your connections at work or through your connections to groups that you belong to. And it could be unexpectedly, like all of a sudden you have this attraction, you have this opportunity. And with Chiron and Mercury t together, I feel like there has to be some type, there's like a healing conversation that has to take place because I'm feeling that you could be having, um, for some of you, you could be having, like there's a friend that you've lost contact with or you're kind of not speaking to or maybe you've had a falling out with a friend, either a romantic partner or a friend. And you may need to have a conversation, like a healing conversation. Talk about your fears, talk about your wounds. and. That this, I feel like this person is a good friend that you could really confide in. So if you're going through a difficult time trying to make a decision, I would seek out this King of Cups because I think he can help you, he or she. It doesn't, I mean, the, the cups, the cards um, can be either sex. But I think there's someone in one of your friends or someone at, that you know at work that you can really talk to and that they, you can feel that they really hear you and they understand what you're going through. 
Um, so I feel like there's a major decision that has to be made in April. And it could involve the ending of your participation in a group, the ending of a relationship, or it could even be um, your dream is changing, your goals are changing. The things that you once thought were important are now changing and you're shifting and you're, you're trying to figure out, your, but you have to end one cycle. This is like the end of a cycle. Like you're ending something so that you can begin something new. And um, you're giving it a lot of serious thought. Now the opportunity is there for a new beginning with the Aries new moon. Um, but you have to overcome some fear or some limitation. Some Something is restricting you. Um, and that's holding you back. It could be a financial situation. Like maybe you're afraid that you're not the new project that you want to get involved in is not going to give you the money that you need or this, you're not going to have the financial support that you've been used to. Um, but I feel all, that there's a friend somewhere in your life that you can, um, that can be a help to you. So reach out to this person and don't give up on a dream. You're coming to the end of a struggle. And you can achieve success. If you're doubting this new beginning because you're doubting that it can be successful, that's gonna that's not a good thing. You you don't wanna you wanna don't let your fears overwhelm you. Focus on the positive, focus on the potential. And take time out to meditate and listen to that inner voice, because that's the voice that will help you make this decision and make you and so that you'll choose the right path so that's my forecast for this month or my reading for this month I hope you've enjoyed this reading and if you'd like a private reading you can check on the link click on the link in the description box and it'll get you to my website and we can schedule you for a reading in the meantime Gemini um, don't let fear hold you back from taking, changing paths. If you feel like it's time for a change, Uranus can help you get there. Uranus can help you release your fears and release whatever's blocking you so that you can move forward and be more fulfilled. And don't be afraid to allow more nurturing friendships and relationships into your life. I feel like you're in, in this transition period right now. But... Um, so take time out to think and to plan and to find out basically what you really want. That's what you have to know. Once you know what you want, then the decision is easy. But when you're not sure what you want, that's where you get stuck. So um, there could be some beautiful relationships or the potential to have new friendships and new relationships if you can um, move past your fears. So good luck with April, Gemini, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.